What's up guys, it's Mitch. Um, I just kind of want to talk about my journey, um, I guess my testimony, um, my way that I kind of turned a potential um, bad situation into a good situation and how I used a uh, tragedy you know, as a, as fuel to to be better. Um, I've always been a Christian. I've um, I've never. There's been times where I haven't lived by it as as hard as I should. Um, and I think a lot of Christians struggle with that. I don't think that's necessarily not normal. Um, I've been saved since I was a kid, about nine years old, but. Until really, really recently, I haven't, I didn't take my uh, faith um, very serious. And, and you know, when I say very serious. I mean, I'm still getting better. Um, I haven't drastically. Um, I still got work to do, just like any Christian, just like any person trying to get better. Um, so when I was a kid. My parents, they divorced when um, when I was young. I don't really ever even remember them being together much. I don't have a whole lot of memories of that. But it, that, didn't, that didn't ever really negatively affect my life. Um, I lived with my mom growing up, just me and my mom. My dad was part of my life. I have an amazing dad. Um, I saw him every other weekend, sometimes every weekend. Um, he would pick me up. <coughs> Good dad, awesome dad, still is. <coughs> An awesome uh, grandpa to both of my two two beautiful daughters. Um, we're actually riding up to see grandma right now. Um, so. You know, um, it was a point when I was in eighth grade where things turned south. Not for me, but for my mom. At that point, I didn't realize she um, had a drug problem. But when I was in eighth grade, uh, things went really bad really fast. And my mom messed up on hardcore drugs like crystal meth and, and cocaine and stuff like that. And I didn't realize what was happening until it was kind of like, bam, okay, this is happening. And, uh, you know, my mom would say she's going up to the store to get some cigarettes and would be gone for two or three hours. And at that time, it, it really wasn't a big deal to me because I thought being a, home alone was pretty cool, you know. I was, in, I was in eighth grade, and, you know, I didn't mind being home alone just like any other kid. So, um, eventually it started getting bad, bad to the point where there would be a couple times where she just flat out didn't come home until after I was asleep. And, um, eventually my grandparents found out about it up the road. And, um, long story short, she, she couldn't get better. My dad eventually came and got me one weekend and then I never went back home. And uh, that was a, a really big, a really big shock in my life because I was getting involved with football. I was, um, I was starting to come into my own as a person. My personality was starting to get kind of carved out, and um, I was starting to become the person I was going to be. Well, when I got ripped out of school a month into eighth grade. I had to go up to a school in the upstate. I live in South Carolina. Um, I lived in Lexington, South Carolina, and we had to move up to Rock Hill. I basically had to start over. Um, I had to start make new friends. I had to. Um, I had to do different things. I had to get accustomed to kind of just. I was always a shy person. So starting over hurt me a lot. It hurt my personality. It kind of shut me down. I didn't go out my way to talk to anybody. Um, you know, my life was kind of put 
put on, it was just a drastic change. Um, and it sucked for me. I loved my dad and I knew, I knew he knew he was doing the right thing and he was because my mom couldn't take care of me. Um, and for the next two years, I had to live with my dad um, in, in Rock Hill. And I never really fully, this was eighth and ninth grade guys, you know, people who went through eighth and ninth grade watching this video know that that's a pivotal time in your life. You're going through puberty, you're going through changes, your thoughts are changing. And it kind of goes without saying, I think, you know, I think y'all get my drift there. Um, and I never really got to experience that part of my life because I was kind of thrown into a new environment at that time in my life. And, and it just, I never could adjust because I was shy. I wasn't outgoing. Um, that kind of turned my personality into an introvert kind of. Um, I knew what I was good at, but I wouldn't stay up and say it. You know, hey, I'm good at this. Um, I kind of shut down personality-wise. And this whole time, my mom's still struggling with drugs. Um, my grandpa um, ended up dying of alcohol um, kind of drastically. And he wasn't a grandpa that that, you know, it was just occasionally, I see you every once in a while, Grandpa. This is a Grandpa that was a pivotal role in my life and my passion of, of actually um, loving the weather. I love the weather. Um, and he was the pivotal role in, in, in that developing that passion that I still have today. Um, and I lost him to alcohol. At the same time, my mom's struggling to drugs. And of course, in eighth, and, and, and when I started getting into ninth grade, you know, you start seeing that more. You start seeing, <coughs> you start seeing teenagers experiencing with that stuff. Um, so it was happening in a very fragile time of my life where I could have really made two decisions. I, I could have been like the average person and used my mom's situation as a crutch. You know, which is what most people do. Or I could have chose right then, hey, I'm not going to be like that. I'm, I'm going to use my mom's situation as a reason to not do it. Um, my mom tore apart my family. And, you know, I, I know I'm kind of, you know, dissing on my mom a lot here. But let me say this. My mom is actually clean today. Um, she doesn't live the best life as far as financially. She's she's on her own. Um, her past mistakes have really bit her in the butt. But she is clean, you know, that, and that's very important. And she's completely clean, and a lot of people can't never get clean. So I'll, I'll add that little sub part there. But <coughs> which I'm very proud of her. She's actually got a degree in everything. But. You know, going back, I had a decision to make, and uh, I kind of remember when I made it. Um, and it was when I went to go see my mom, and uh, I went to open up the door, and she wouldn't even let me in the house. All she could do was peek in, was peek out, and say, "It was my birthday." Um, all she could do was peek out the door and give me ten dollars for my birthday or something and you know I, I knew that she was in there doing drugs getting messed up and uh the real thing that broke me was chris was my eighth grade year my mom begged my dad um to to let me come back home for christmas so you know my dad did i, I went i went back home i stayed with some dude I didn't really even know that my mom was staying with. Um, probably some kind of drug supplier, really. And um, I remember, I remember it was crazy. It was, um, I was sitting there. My mom said she had to run up somewhere to the store, just like she always said. And, um, she never came back. This was Christmas Eve. 
she flat out just never came back. I remember I kind of stayed up watching movies, watching the, oh, I think it was the Hawaii Bowl or something like that, um, up to about one or two o'clock in the morning. Eventually, I just kind of fell asleep. And I woke up a couple hours later <coughs> to look in my mom's room. Sure enough, um, she, uh, she was just still, she wasn't home. So eventually I called my, my grandpa at the road and he came and got me. And basically, long story short, guys, is my mom left me on Christmas Eve to get, to do cocaine up the road and did it all night. And I said then, you know, I'm not gonna be like my mom. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna one day be that guy that destroys my family, to puts my kids in a tough situation that my mom put me in. And <clears throat> I'm not gonna go that route. I used it as a reason. I use it as my excuse instead of my crutch. I use it as my excuse not to be like that. And I think a lot of young people struggle with that. Um, I think it's a, I got, like I said, I got two little girls and I think it's something that, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough and sensitive subject to go about it. You gotta figure out a way to go about it. But, you know, for me, I didn't need help. I decided early on, hey, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do drugs. I'm not gonna drink. And guys, this day I've still never done drugs. I'm 20 years old, I'm 28 years old. And I've still never done mar smoked marijuana. <coughs> I never smoked a cigarette. I try to drink on occasion sometimes. Just have a, just have some uh, <coughs> like a girly little fruity drink or something. Because really, that's the only thing that tastes good to me. I don't know how people drink. It just tastes awful. Um, and uh, so I really don't do it. So. God helped me to change, to, to take a different avenue, to take a different approach. And my mom continued to struggle with drugs all the way through high school. She didn't really get real clean until my senior year. And um, eventually I got to move back to, you know, I got to move back home to Columbia, but things just weren't the same. Um, the friends I was starting to meet in eighth grade, you know, they had changed. They had went to growing up, and I, I was <coughs> I was kind of left to find a new group of friends. And thank God, those new group of friends I still got today. Um, eventually, I started to come out my sh uh, shell. It, it, it affected my personality because, to me, I wasn't that type of guy that said, yeah, I got a rough life. Um, my mom was on drugs. Uh, yeah, this that I, 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 I shut it all in, guys. I didn't talk about it, and to me, I blocked it all out. Most of my friends didn't even know it was happening, and uh, I was living with my granny, and my granny was a huge, a, a huge pivotal force to carving, to recarving my personality and changing who I was and humbling me. Um, really helping me become the person I am today. <coughs> so, <coughs> I, I still struggled, um, but everyone goes through some time kind of fight. And it's up to you to whether you're going to let that fight beat you down or are you going to embrace the fight and know that one day good will come out of it. And I don't know if I necessarily thought that when I was younger, but I knew one thing, and that was that I wasn't going to make the same mistakes my mom did. And um, that was fuel to my fire. And that's what got me through. And uh, even at such a young age, I knew what I wanted. And it was to be a loving father, to marry a wife that was going to be a loving mother. Um, and all that came true for me, guys. I'm 28 years old. Um, 
have a wonderful wife. She's a wonderful mother. Um, I'm blessed with the mindset to, to um, I decided at a young age I wanted nice things, so I had to work two jobs for her. And you know, that wasn't a big deal to me. I embraced it, and that's how it was. And um, 28, I have, we have our own house. Um, two beautiful girls, beautiful foundation. The foundation is huge. You can have all this, but you can have a husband that cheats on you, a wife that cheats on you. You, you, could, you could just have a lot of issues. Um, to me, I struggle a lot of times with um, looking what other people got. Um, and what I don't realize sometimes is what I got is beautiful. And <clears throat> that's kind of been my testimony this year is um, getting close to God, getting closer to God, and realizing that, you know, I don't have it all that bad. <clears throat> I think that's something that I struggled with. And a lot of people want to play victim that they got it so bad. But, guys, there's just so many people out there that have it so much worse. And, um... I'm blessed, and even if your situation is bad, guys, you're blessed. You just got to find out that you are um, in, your, in your mind, in your heart, and, and allow yourself to know you are. And, you know, just, just keep fighting a good fight. And never forget where you came from. But don't use what you came from as a crutch to fail. Don't use it as an excuse. If something bad happened from where you came from, no excuses, guys. And um, that's why I have a hard time having sympathy for people who <coughs> who say, oh, that... that that guy's struggling because he has a bad home life um, because of where he's came from. I'll end it with this, guys. <clears throat> I'm an avid believer that God gives everyone a chance to succeed. Now, that chance might be a lot harder. It might be a lot tougher to get through. It might be way more difficult to reach than others but listen God puts God puts this fight in our lives for a reason and that reason might not show itself till way down the road but he makes everybody's fight different and you know that's that's the awesome part of it is eventually you'll know um, why but you got to get through it. You can't just give up. And I'll just leave it at that. I know it's not really a testimony. Um, I've always known God in my heart. I've always been a Christian. I think the older I get, the more I realize things, the more my faith grows. But um, I hope my story somehow helps someone else. Um, the main thing I would like for someone to take from it is that don't, don't use your your bad pass is a crutch to fail yourself. Um, whether someone made your past bad or whether you made your past bad, you always can turn your life around, guys. Y'all have a blessed day.